We have all seen some shocking makeup transformation videos. In the real life, it can take a lot of time, tons of skills, maybe an hour, maybe more. But today I'm going to share with you something where all you got to do is to just press a button and everything from retouching to makeup all just happens automatically. Let's take a look. Here's the before and here is the after. Pretty crazy, isn't it? Now, of course, you can adjust anything at any point in time. And we're going to take a closer look at this brand new incredible tool called Face Make and see if it's really something you should consider. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and there are two ways we can apply Face Make. First, as a plugin. So here in Photoshop, I've already retouched my photo. Let's create a stamp visible layer at the top with the topmost layer selected. Press Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E. Now in this layer, we're going to go to Filter, Convert for Smart Filter so that when we apply the Face Make filter, we can change the values later. The first way is applying Face Make, retouch for me, Face Make as a plugin. So once you install FaceMake, you can use it as a plugin or a standalone application. By the way, if you wish to follow along, you can download the trial version using the link in the description absolutely for free. And then if you're interested, I'll also leave a discount code in the description if they are available. And as you can see, it applies the last applied settings. It may be too much, so we can always adjust these sliders. But once you're happy, hit apply. There you go. Here's the before. And here is the after. This is a bit too much, but you can always adjust that. Now, the second way of applying it is using the standalone application instead of the Photoshop plugin. So let's go to our finder. You can drag and drop your photo right here and you can apply it directly using this. You can turn on maybe lifting. So it does a bit of lifting and then you can apply some makeup, scroll down and maybe add some lipstick here and you can go with whatever you like and control its depth too. So I'm going to go with Twilight Lips and Depth is fine. You can adjust the color and all of that. And you can directly export from here. But if you have Photoshop, I recommend that because then you can also do the retouching, the makeup, everything in one place. Now, before we get into how it works, we need to understand the workflow here. Before we apply any kind of makeup, it is important that we do our retouching. It is important that we remove the blemishes, do our dodging and burning. And there are a variety of ways in which you can do it. You can do it manually, one by one. You can meticulously do dodging and burning. But if you don't have the time, you can use some AI plugins to do that. I recommend using Retouch for me. For example, with the background layer selected, you can press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy. Then go to Filter, Retouch for me, Retouch for me, Heal. This is for removing the blemishes. It automatically detects all the blemishes and you can control the sensitivity of how many blemishes is it detecting. So I'm going to keep it 100, Make Mask turned on, hit Apply. And in this layer, you just have all the blemishes covered as you can see before after. On top of that, you can create a stamp visible layer by pressing Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E and apply another Retouch For Me plugin. Go here, Retouch For Me, Dodge, Burn. It automatically does dodging and burning. And have a look. It's done. It's ready to use. Maybe you want to create a soft light layer. Turn that on, hit apply. And here we have a soft light layer. We change the blend mode to soft light. And we have also done the dodging and burning. Now, if you already have most of the important Retouch For Me plugins, you don't have to apply this one by one. I have created an action that applies most of the important Retouch For Me plugins one by one automatically. So all you have to do is to go to Actions and you can download this action using the link in the description. And to know more about how to use this action step by step, there is another video. So if you have questions about it, this is the dedicated video for it. So let's open our actions by going to Window and Actions. Inside of that, we will play the basic action. Select that and play it. It is inside Pix Auto Retouch Actions. You'll be able to download this using the link in the description. Do know that these actions will only work if you have the Retouch For Me plugins and know that this is for saving time. If you wish to do it manually, you're welcome to do so. If you wish to use any other method for retouching, you're always welcome to do so. Once the retouching is done, as you can see, it has removed the blemishes, dodging and burning, depth, eye cleanup, eye contrast, skin tone. Once it has done all of that, you need to create a stamp visible layer at the top by pressing Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E with the topmost layer selected. Then let's go to Filter, Convert for Smart Filter so that when we apply Face Make, we can change the values later. Let's go to Filter, Retouch for me and Face Make. By default, nothing is applied at the moment. Let's zoom in by pressing Ctrl or Command Plus and then let's turn on lifting at the top. By the way, if there are multiple faces, you can pick the face using this drop down. Right now, there's just one. So we see one. Turn on lifting here and it does some kind of awesome lifting, which is fantastic. Lifting basically balances facial features. If we reduce it, this is how it was before. 
but this is going to be too much. So I'm going to find a middle spot like this. I'm going a bit heavy handed. You can be a bit softer too. That's up to you. Now you can enhance the feminine features by using this slider. This looks pretty good. I'm going to stop right about there, maybe at about 46. You can also enhance the masculine features. Now, if you have a female face, doesn't mean that you're not going to be using that. It gives a nice straight to the camera look. So I'm going to increase it maybe to about 40. And let's take a look at the before and after by holding the space bar before, after. Massive difference. We are changing the person, but you get what we are doing. Now the lips are becoming too thick. Maybe it is something you like, maybe you don't. If you don't, you can decrease the lips effect to keep it more natural. And then after doing all of the lifting here, you can control the smoothing to reduce the entire effect to make the entire thing more natural. So I'm going to increase the smoothing to about 82 so that the changes are subtle. Here's the before, here's the after. Very subtle and this looks a little more realistic. Now if you want to turn your photos to cartoons, you can also do that by turning on fun mode. And once it is turned on, if you play with lifting, this just turns into something else. So we don't want that. Let's go back to how it was. I'm going to reduce the feminine lifting to about 56 and this is fine. Now let's switch to makeup. Let's turn this on and there are three areas that you can apply makeup to. Eyes, lips and skin. Let's start with the eyes and you can pick anything from this drop down or use these arrow buttons. So let's go next. You can go with whatever you like. You can control the depth of it. In other words, the opacity of that. So this is no effect. This is full effect. You can apply a little bit of that. You can also change the hue of this. So if you want to modify the color of that a little bit, you can do that as well. Maybe I'm going to play with a few more. Maybe this looks good, but the color is weird. So you can always change the colors to something that you like. And maybe it is too much as well. So I'm going to decrease the depth here. And makeup artists, I'm really sorry if I'm getting this stuff wrong. Let's take care of the lips. Scroll down and there are a couple of lipstick styles that you can apply. Plump, soft contour. So I'm going to probably go with twilight lips. This is nice and you can control the depth and the color of the lipstick. Now you might have noticed that the lipstick is not being covered properly and that is due to how the software is detecting the face. If you click and hold here, you'll be able to see how the detection has been. If you want to adjust the mesh, you can click here and then you can adjust it using the brush. You can control the brush size. So I'm going to set it to 16 and maybe stretch it a little bit from here to cover it all. Also stretch it a bit from here to cover it all. Now let's select the pan and zoom to deselect that. And there you go. Now it is covering it properly and you can take your time to fix those lines. Now let's scroll down, take care of the skin. Here, there are many ones that you can apply like golden dots. It adds some nice freckles. There are some other effects as well. There's another freckle effect, soft rose, blushed radiance, dreamy highlight. Maybe I'm going to go with sunset glow. Goes really well with this. And again, if you think it is too much, you can always control the depth. Very light makeup. Maybe also decrease the depth of the eye areas. Now let's scroll down. We have displace. If we turn this on, you can change separate parts of the face. Of course, right now it is set to big eyes, which we don't want. You can have slim lips, big lips, chin, face. You can target anything you want. For example, you want a narrow nose. Let's pick that. And then you can control the depth to decide how narrow you want the nose to be. This is way too much, of course. So you can have a little bit of that. But for this example, I don't want it. So I'm just going to turn it off. Now the texture feature, which is here. I don't know how useful that is going to be. Maybe for some illustrations, maybe for superimposing stuff, maybe for some really creative stuff. But if you turn it on, you'll see what I mean. It just superimposes another face on top of that. There are a few options. You can also import your own. There's a man, there's another woman and then you can control the depth of that. You can try to match that. I don't really see enough use cases of this. So I'm just going to turn it off. Now, if you find your portrait is not so symmetrical, you can adjust it in the reshape section. If you turn it on, you'll have a slider to adjust the symmetry. And if you increase it, it will try to make your portrait more and more symmetrical. So if I turn it off, see, if I turn it on, See the change? Now this portrait is already very symmetrical, so you don't see a massive change. Now if you want to reshape the face using some presets, that is also possible. Let's turn on reshape here. And you have a couple of options. There is woman, 
it sets it this way. You can control how much you want to reshape it that way. You can also change the symmetry of that, like so. I don't see much use case of it, but it's just something fun to do. Cartoon girl, this is maybe interesting, but I'm not interested in that, so I'm just going to set it to none. If you ask me, it is not really required in our day-to-day -day scenario, so I'm just going to turn it off. What's important here is lifting and makeup. So with those turned on, I'm going to hit apply. And there we have the makeup applied too. Here's the before, before makeup, here's after. Very slight makeup, overall before, after. Massive, massive difference. Now what is interesting and the advantage of smart objects is that you can always change the values later. So here's where we had applied face make, right? If you don't see it, click on this arrow to open that up and just double click right here. All of those settings will show up. So for example, you wanted a little more makeup on the cheek, so you can scroll down and just increase the depth here. You wanted to change the color of that, that is also possible like so. So maybe I'm going to keep it this way, hit apply, and those changes easily take effect. Let's take a look at another example, and it's about remembering settings. Here is the before, here is the after. We have already retouched it. With the topmost layer selected, press Ctrl, Alt, Shift, and E to create a stamp visible layer at the top. Next, let's not forget, filter, convert for smart filters, and then filter, retouch for me, face, make. Now, as soon as we apply it, it applies the previous settings that we had in the previous example. And already, let's take a look. Here's the before, here's the after. You can hold the space bar to look at the before and after, or use this button right here. Click and hold before release to see the after. And overall, I don't really think we need much changes here. Maybe let's decrease this and it looks pretty fantastic. You can try different makeup for the skin. For example, let's say you wanted to apply some freckles. You can easily do that and then increase the depth to increase the intensity of the freckles. Once you're happy with this, hit apply. And there you have it, before, after. Now all this looks fantastic, but there are definitely some pros and cons to this plugin. Let's start with the cons. Usually when we apply face make, we go a little heavy handed with it. And if we go to the face make settings by double clicking right here, there is not one slider to reduce the effect of everything. Like there should have been one slider like we have in Liquify and Photoshop that reduces the amounts of everything proportionately because we as humans tend to go overboard. Here in this case, we would have to reduce it one by one and test it, see what works for us. It just would have been convenient to have a one slider for everything, all the makeup, all the adjustment, all the lifting, and if you had done some reshaping or otherwise. I really request for a blending slider in the future. Secondly, we don't have many options for eyebrows. There is nothing that's gonna shape the eyebrows properly. Also, we don't have many options for eyelashes. The third thing that bothers me is that there's nothing like a preset. I wish there was a way that you could save all of these settings. It'll make life so much easier because you find yourself applying the same options again and again. Now, as for the pros, I have to say it is an incredible for just one click. Amazing. And you can have it as subtle as you want or as heavy as you want. The second thing is it works with smart objects so you can change the settings at any point in time. If you think it is too much, you can always double click here, go here and decrease the lifting, increase the smoothing, hit apply and the changes will take effect. Finally, whether you're working with a 5 megapixel image or a 50 megapixel image, it is going to work. There is no resolution limitation. And I think we have to say this as a pro these days, there is no credit system. You can edit as many images as you want once you get it. I hope I could show you something new. I hope you enjoyed this tool. If you want to check it out, if you want to just get the trial version, try it for free. I'll leave the trial version download link in the description. And if you do want to get it later, I'll also paste the discount codes if they are available. Thank you so much for watching this one. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.